Hi, my name's Stephen Brown and welcome to Bits of Code. This is a show where you can learn how to build your own StarCraft 2 bot, uh, maybe put it on the competitive ladder and maybe compete in pro bots. Now recently I interviewed Raf and Unusual, they were the makers of a bot called Micro Machine. Micro Machine has been very successful on the competitive ladder and in the pro bots tournament. And when I interviewed them, they described that they use something called the Combat Simulator. And it turns out that this uh, Combat Simulator is available for everybody in a library called the SE2 Lib Voxel Bot. And this, uh, this library essentially simulates the outcome of battles between different unit compositions and will give you the result. So we can take a look at that now and see what it says on their GitHub page. So here we are on the Lib Voxel Bot uh, GitHub page. And as you can see, all the source code is here, ready to use and ready to compile. And at the start of their instructions here, you can see they talk about their combat simulator and what it's capable of. The simulator is very fast. Um, it can simulate tens of thousands of battles per second. That's quite good. It means you can run it um, in real time in your bot to decide whether to uh, attack or retreat or you know continue fighting out a battle. And as you can see here on these graphs, they've got four games simulated between two, two armies and they're showing how the real game went versus what the simulator game did. So as you can see the libvoxelbot uh, library is quite handy, quite fast, uh, reasonably accurate but it could be a little bit tricky to integrate with bots uh, that aren't coded in C++ or C Sharp or whatever it is. Uh, so the other thing is that it won't take into account how your particular army acts. So it's a very great library and what it kind of got me thinking about was an idea I had back in 2017. Uh, I went to BlizzCon, I went to the AI Summit and the idea I had there was maybe we can use machine learning to predict the outcomes of these battles and that's actually what we're going to do today. Let's have a look at a replay of me training this bot to do this prediction and we can see what we're going to build. So here we are in the game, you can see the fog of war has been disabled and we have two armies, one at the top left and one at the bottom right and this is a special map called Flat 128 and it's really designed to eliminate a lot of the terrain and other issues that you might find if you're using a more complex map. Now both armies are going to do the same thing, they're going to build a supply depot and a barracks and then they're going to build a predetermined number of marines and they'll be chosen randomly for each team. So you can see top left we're building a few marines, bottom right we're building a few marines. And now you can see the top left has actually finished building marines, it's got three marines. And the bottom right we've got three marines and at least five marines on the way. So if we continue to play this through we can see they're going to build all of the marines. So I think it'll come out at about nine or ten. And it's really important you can see that the the first army has not attacked, it's still waiting for this army to build all of its marines. So that's a very important part of how these bots work and how they predict the outcome accurately. Okay, so all the marines are built. And now it says it's ready and it sends, both of the armies send their marines into the middle of the map to fight it out. Oh, that was a pretty quick fight. The, uh, the marines, the three marines are pretty dead. And now the second army goes through and kills all the buildings of the first army. So that's great. What we get there is a very specific outcome for that matchup of three Marines versus say nine or 10 Marines. Uh, it tells us that the nine or 10 Marines wins uh, and we can use that to uh, train our bot to uh, learn essentially what will and what won't work. So now that you know what our bot is going to do, let's get into building it. So the first thing that we're going to do is to create the base agent that both of the armies will use. This is going to be a Terran agent, so let's create a file called terranagent.py. We'll add a few imports here. You've probably seen some of these before. So we're loading in the base agent from PyC2 and the actions, features, and units from PyC2. And then we're going to be using the random uh, function, so we'll include that as well. <coughs> now we create our Terran agent. With this line here extends from the the base agent of pi c2 and then we're going to create three 
methods here for building a supply depot, building a barracks and training a marine. So we'll drop those in now. So here we go. So building a supply depot, if we don't have one and we have enough minerals and we have SCVs, then we're going to take our base X and Y coordinates, which we'll talk about later. We're going to choose the supply depot X and Y coordinates based on where our base is. And we're going to grab a random SCV and tell it to build the supply depot. Same thing for our barracks. Uh, we'll check to see if we have a barracks already, but also we want to make sure we've got a supply depot and that we have enough minerals. And once again, we're building at a predetermined location. And then for our marine, if we've got a barracks and we've got enough minerals, then we'll train a marine as long as we don't have more than five marines already queued up. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is allow our agent to attack. So we'll paste this in here now. Now this attack method is kind of special. As you saw in the replay, the first thing that the armies do is meet in the middle of the map and that's around 3131 in coordinates. So this part here is we check and make sure if there are any ar enemy army units, we'll send our units to the middle of the map where their enemy army units should be. They'll attack each other. Once all of the enemy army units have been defeated, we'll check and make sure if there are any enemy buildings. And if there are, we'll just grab the first enemy building and we'll start attacking it because we know that the win condition is that we destroy all of the enemy buildings. And this gets the game over and done with as quickly as possible. Now, the next thing that we want to add is the step method. So we'll paste that in now. And one thing we're going to do here that I haven't done in my previous agents is we're going to loop through all of the units in the game and compile a list of, of those units uh, on every step. And this is a little bit faster than having to loop through the units repeatedly to say grab all the SCVs and grab all the barracks and grab all the marines and so on and so on. By looping through those units once, uh, it performs a lot better and makes it a little bit easier to code as well. So the first thing we do here is we store the current observation as a local property so they can be used by the other methods that we added previously. And that means we don't have to pass the observation around, we can just use them, use it directly. We get our free supply uh, and then we initialize a few values here. So we're going to keep track of our command center, our supply depot, the completed supply depot, the barracks and the completed barracks, all of our marines, all of our SCV, SCVs, and we'll actually keep track of how many marines are queued up. The other thing we're going to do is track all of the enemy buildings and all of the enemy army units. So now we're looping through all of the units in the game, our units, enemy units, neutral units. And if they're our units, by checking the alliances player relative self, uh, we'll then go through and check the, the type of the unit and perform the appropriate action. So if it's a barracks, uh, we'll set our barracks value to be that unit. And if it's been completed, we'll say that our barracks is completed. Uh, we'll just track our command center, we'll add marines to the list, we'll add SCVs to the list, and as with the barracks with our supply depot, we store that, and then if it's completed, we say yes, the supply depot has been completed. So the next thing that we're doing here is a little bit tricky. We're actually iterating over all of the orders that each unit has, and if the order ID is 511, which is building a marine, then we'll in increment the queued marine count so we can keep track of how many marines are queued as well as the marines that have already been produced which will be in our marines list that we saw earlier. And then what we do is if the unit actually belongs to our enemy, we check if it's one of the, the building units and add it to the enemy buildings list. Uh, otherwise, if it's a marine, we'll add it to the enemy army units list. And lastly, we want to uh, set the base X and Y coordinates in the first step of the game uh, to the X and Y coordinates of our command center. And we do this once just to make it perform a little bit better, but also potentially if the command center died for some reason, uh, which doesn't happen in this particular game, but can happen in other games, we still know where our base is. So that's our Terran agent built. The next thing we want to do is create the, I guess, main game uh, code. So we'll add that now. We'll call that uh, battle tvt.py. 
and we add all our imports here. So these are all of the things that we need to essentially run the game. Uh, we load in our Terran agent, which we just created. Uh, we'll use random again, and we're gonna be using some CSV stuff, so we'll import that library as well. One of the things that's a little bit tricky to keep track of is when both of our agents are ready. As you remember from the replay, both agents waited until each one was finished before they started attacking. And the way that we're gonna do that is with this thing called a battle manager. And essentially this keeps track of the number of Marines that the two agents will actually produce and whether or not they're ready. So we just create that class there now, the battle manager. And then we're gonna create our enemy agent. So this is, there's essentially two agents. There's our predictor, which is the one that's going to learn. Uh, and then there's the enemy agent, which is the, the opposition. Now, in this case, you could use the same agent for both since they're both Terran agents. But if you were trying to predict a battle between uh, Terran and Zerg, it's really important that you have the predictor, say, be Terran and the uh, enemy be Zerg, and that you keep those two separate. Uh, it will make sense in terms of keeping track of the units and, and those sorts of things later on. So we add our enemy agent class and in the initializer we receive the battle manager and set it as a local property. Then we add our step method and if it's the first step of the game we want to set the enemy ready flag from the battle manager to false so that resets it and we want to set the number of marines that we're going to produce for the enemy to a random number between 1 and 10. Then just for our debugging purposes we will output the number of marines that we've chosen to the console and that just helps you to make sure the things are working. Next before we get too far into taking any more actions we just want to see if we're ready yet so maybe we've built a supply depot barracks and a couple of marines. Here we're going to check that the number of marines that we have is the same as the number of marines that we want to build and if we're not already ready and potentially attacking then we want to set the enemy ready flag to true and we will output that we're ready just so you can debug that in the console and finally we add all of our actions uh, now the order of these things is actually very important uh, we want to check and attack as the first thing that we do because if we do uh, the attack check last what will happen is our agents will start to rebuild buildings and they'll start to reproduce marines and you'll get an inaccurate outcome so essentially what this order of events ensures is that once both agents are ready the only thing they will do is attack each other and then the game will be over so first we check that the predictor is ready and the enemy is ready and if so we can attack uh, if we don't have a supply depot then we're going to build one if we don't have a barracks we'll build one and if the marines we have plus the cube marines is less than the number of marines we're supposed to build then we'll train the marine this is really important this check here that we have the cube marine count plus the count of marines that we've already produced if we don't include those cube marines it will continue to queue up marines and then overproduce, and then the number of marines that we actually see coming out will be inaccurate you'll probably get three four five extra marines coming out now that we've built our enemy agent, we can build our predictor agent. And this is very similar, but keep note here that instead of setting enemy values, we're setting predictor values. So in our initializer, we receive the battle manager again. That's the same as our enemy agent. Uh, but in our first step, we set the predictor ready flag and we set the predictor marines values instead of the enemy, flag, enemy ready and enemy marines values. And once again, we do the same check here where we're checking that the um, number of Marines we've produced is the same as the Marines that we're supposed to produce. And if so, we say that the predictor is ready as opposed to saying that the enemy is ready. And again, here with the, the actions that we take and the checks that we do. So these are all almost identical, except this last step here where we check the predictor Marines instead of the enemy Marines. So the main difference between the predictor agent and the enemy agent is this little piece of code here. So if it's the last step of the game, we want to record the outcome of the game and, and put it into a CSV file. So first we'll just output, uh, for debugging purposes, we'll output what happened. And then we'll open up the 
CSV file, we want to append to this file and we just want to set the new line here. That's just kind of a Windows hack because Windows has different new lines to Linux. Now we'll create a CSV writer. This uh, essentially writes values out to the CSV file and we'll write the predictor marines, the enemy marines and the reward to the file. So there's no learning actually happening here. All we're going to do is run these agents for a certain number of games. All the outcomes will be put into this file and then we can do some machine learning from that file once the games are over. And the last thing that we need in here is the code that actually runs the game. So we create our battle manager, we create both of the agents and we pass in the battle manager to both agents. We're playing on the flat 128 map. We're using raw actions and raw units. We're setting the raw resolution to 64. This is just a fairly low resolution, makes it easy to work with and we know that 31, 31 is approximately the, the middle of the map. We set the step multiplier to 128. You don't have to do this, but it really helps the game to run a lot faster because it can skip a huge number of steps that are just unit building and that sort of thing. We want to make sure that we disable the fog of war and then we're going to run the game for say 20 games in this case. So now that we have that, let's give it a run and see what happens. So as you can see, the game is running. Uh, we're looking at the enemy bot here. Uh, it's very quickly producing a bunch of marines. You can see that it's going to send them out into the middle of the map once the two armies are ready. It's going to win and now it's going to attack the enemy. So that's great, our code works and we'll keep this running for 20 games and then we'll take a look at our CSV file and see what we can do with it. Okay, great. So our 20 games are over and we can take a look at the CSV file now and see what's in there. Cool, so you can see all of our games are recorded and the outcomes of each game is recorded here. Uh, now there's quite a few losses, there's a couple of wins uh, and there's a good combination of, you know, eight versus eight, one versus 10, you know, seven versus 10, lots of different combinations of, of armies so this should give us a good spread you may want to run your game for longer to give it a more accurate uh, outcome I guess the, the more games you run the more information the machine learning algorithm has to make predictions so before we get too far into choosing our machine learning algorithm let's plot this data on a graph so that we can make an informed decision so we'll create a file called plottvt.py so we can see here the graph that's been plotted out for us and you can see a series of red dots in the top left and a series of green dots in the bottom right and what's interesting here is you can see the 8 versus 8 was a loss and the 7 versus 7 was a win so it's not always guaranteed that every game will be a win or a loss you know when the army counts are the same it could go either way and this creates a bit of uncertainty uh, in our data and a, something tricky for our algorithm to work with and we'll see that later on that can actually impact the accuracy of the algorithm uh, so you have to sort of take that into consideration so in order to choose an algorithm for this I like to start with the simplest algorithm first so you can sort of see with this graph that you could draw a diagonal line and almost perfectly separate the two values uh, so we want an algorithm that can deal with that and the type of algorithm that we're looking for is called a classification algorithm. And that essentially is a little bit like hot dog, not hot dog. We're, we're, in this case, we're breaking the results into two classes, the winning and the losing, or winning and not winning. And there's an algorithm uh, that comes for free for this, and it's called logistic regression. And we can get that as part of the scikit-learn library. So, Let's build our machine learning algorithm and train it now. So the first thing we'll do is create a file called traintvt.py. So we'll add a few imports here. Now, the first one you know of, it's uh, the CSV library. The next three all come from the scikit-learn uh, library. The first is our logistic regression algorithm, train test split, which I'll explain later, and accuracy score, which will allow us to test the accuracy of our machine learning algorithm. Okay, now what we do here is create some placeholders for our inputs and our labels. The inputs are going to be our army counts for each army, and the labels are going to be the outcomes. So we read the CSV file, we look at each row, 
Uh, we get the predictor marines, enemy marines and score as we did before. So we add the predictor marines and enemy marines to the inputs and we add the game result to the labels. Now if it was a win we want the label to be a 1 and if it was a loss we want the label to be a 0. The next thing that we're going to do is create our logistic regression algorithm and we're going to split our data into training data and testing data. Now what we do here is uh, we want to choose different data sets. We've got 20 rows and we want to train on some of that data and we want to test on a different set of data and this sort of allows us to measure whether our algorithm is learning correctly. You don't typically want to test your algorithm on the same data that you trained it with because it might have just learned that data and, and not generally what the situation looks like. So you, you want these data sets to be different. Now the train test split function does all of this for you and it splits it into 75% training data and 25% testing data. And what you get out of that is the training data, the test data, the training labels and the testing labels. Then we feed that data in, so we call the fit method with the training data and the training labels, and this essentially does all of the learning for you. The next thing that we do is we ask the algorithm to predict the outcome for all of our test data, and then we can output the accuracy of whether it accurately predicted the outcome. So we feed it our test labels, so the actual outcomes and then we feed in the predictions and it will tell us the accuracy. So let's run that now. There we go. So we've got an accuracy of 60%. If we run it again, we might get a different accuracy. So 100%. So you can get different outcomes because the data set that we have kind of varies in what we're feeding in and what the outcomes will be. Um, but as you run more and more games, you'll find that this actually gets closer to 90% or so. So that's how you build a machine learning algorithm that can learn from battle outcomes. Uh, what you can do from here is potentially make the army compositions more complex, uh, something that suits what you're trying to achieve, uh, and then probably the more complex your armies get, the more games you'll have to run to, to get it to learn. But what I've found is that this algorithm will work for most army compositions. So it's, it's quite accurate. Uh, and the more games you run, the more accurate it will be and it's usually from 90 to 100 percent accurate and that, that's quite good and then you can output the results of this uh, learning to a file and load that learning in and then run the predictions and the predictions are extremely fast and you'll be able to use them in a real bot uh, however you like so that's it for this episode of bits of code thanks for watching uh, please give us your bits of feedback and we'll see you in the next one